line right now, we got a special guest. Had time to call in to the podcast. We were supposed to have him in here, but, you know, because he's such a good friend, he said, you know, I'm going to call in. We're going to talk a little bit about the Nets. That is Michael Grady, sideline reporter for the Yes Network, covering uh, the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, you can catch him. Grady, what's up, my man? Hey, man, not too much. Doing pretty good. Good to be on with you guys again. You yeah. can't you can't say not too much today. There's a lot going on today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, like uh, there's a lot going on today. Um, with <laughs> so on, on on one hand, it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but it it's uh, this day did not go the way I, I expected it to uh, to go for sure. Yeah, you know how that is, Grady, because you know you think you're having a day off in the world of news, and then you know something pops up, and I, I texted you this morning because I was like, yeah, I know you might have to be at the press conference and you know see what went down with everything uh, with that. Just talk to us because we talked about this yeah. at the top of the show, and we were like, we woke up this morning, and we we're extremely shocked to you know see this news that you know there's a parting of ways with kenny atkinson what, what was your reaction when you saw the news yeah uh like complete complete shock so this is um you know you know how it is when you got a, like crazy travel scheduling you're trying to organize everything and i've got a i got a long seven eight day west coast road trip coming up on monday i got a 6 a.m flight mm. so i'm looking at okay it's saturday i could get some good rest in on saturday Got the podcast for my guys. Got a, got a couple of other things to do. Go to bed early on Saturday. Sunday, I've got to leave for the arena at 11.30 a.m. So that kind of disrupts things a little bit. Have the game. As soon as I get home, get rest. And then wake up at 3.30 a.m. So I'm looking at this Saturday morning. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm asleep well. No alarm. There's nothing better in our business, or I guess in, yes. any, in, in any industry, than to go to sleep and then not set the alarm. So when I wake up and I see, like, my texts and my phones are, like, blowing up, and it's 11:45, and there's a 12:30 press conference, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so yeah. So no, it was um, it was it was bananas, man. It was bananas because um, if this had come after the Memphis loss, for example, where they gave up 140 points to the Grizzlies or out hustled right. the entire way, then maybe the, maybe the reaction from the outside would be a little bit different. But they had rebounded and responded well in a blowout victory over the San Antonio Spurs. So I think we all went to bed last night, as opposed, as, uh, with the exception of those in the inner circle who were at that conversation last night with Kenny, Sean, and whoever else was there. I think the rest of us all went to sleep and I think, all right, they're back on the right track. They'll get a win against Chicago, and then we'll see what happens on this West Coast trip. Uh, not very many people saw this one coming. Yeah, I don't think I don't think a lot of people saw it coming at all. Did you think that the locker room was split on this decision, or like you know what 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 could you tell us about what you know in terms of you know that, the insides of it? That re- that remains that remains to be seen. I think I, I think what we're hinting at is human nature um, to a certain extent, and yeah. there's going to have to be more conversations with players as time allows to try to get an idea of that. And they, that may not be revealed right away. It may be revealed in the summer at some point, or it may be revealed further down the road or when guys are on different teams or whatever. But to speak on the human element part, there are guys who have been within the organization and have been under Kenny Atkinson's tutelage for multiple years now. Mm-hmm. Jared Allen matured under Kenny Atkinson. Joe Harris blossomed his game, um, added so many different elements to it under Kenny Atkinson. Spencer Dinwiddie went to a, went from a, a G League dude, seldom used player, to a, a near All Star candidate this year, a Six Man of the Year, you know, candidate, a most improved candidate over the course of these last couple of seasons with the Brooklyn Nets. And then you have guys who come in, you know, whether it be a Kyrie, Kevin, a Torian Prince, a DeAndre Jordan, and their time with Kenny has been very short lived, and there's been highs and lows due to injuries and a number of, a number of other different factors. So um, I don't know how split the locker room was, but I know that there are guys like Karis Levert, who I didn't even mention, very passionate about um, Kenny Atkinson versus guys who have only known him for a short amount of time, where the respect is there. But, you know, some of the newer guys may not feel the same way that a Joe Harris feels right this moment. No, uh, no. Obviously, totally understood. Time, time definitely affects. So that, well, I guess, the big question for everybody now is: Jock Vaughn will take over. We'll coach the last twenty games of the season, uh, Mike. But where do you think the organization goes from here? You know, is Jock Vaughn the answer? Are they going to be looking for a bigger name? Where do you see them going from here? 
Yeah, we, well, I, I think the numbers show that they're a small, and I don't have it in front of me, but they're a small number of guys who had the interim tag, which he does not have. They are saying that he is the head coach for the rest of the season. They're not putting an interim tag hmm. on it at all. But let's just say we're talking about an interim tag for the sake of the discussion. Um, it's not that often that those guys end up keeping that job. Usually those guys hold that job for the rest of the, you know, rest of the year, and then they open up the search and somebody new is brought in. And, uh, and Jock understand that, and he's going to roll with the punches and do everything within his power to make sure that it's a successful end of the season and that the guys are competing each and every night and making a, a, and continuing this playoff run. So outside of um, Jacques Vaughn, I, it, you just open up the floodgates. Um, it's a job that I'm sure – a lot of people will be interested in. I think a lot of people will definitely think about it too, given the fact that there are strong personalities there and your Kevin Durant and your Kyrie Irvings and the expectations will be high. But if you're a coach worth your salt, that, I think that's a challenge that you'd be willing to accept. And so it is a high profile gig, an opportunity to coach some big time names and to do something special that's never been done in Brooklyn, which adds its fair share of excitement. It adds its share, uh, fair share of of pressure um, as well with it. So we're going to hear a lot of names um, thrown out there, uh, but one thing's for sure, it has to be somebody that these, these players, uh, that these players really respect and somebody who, that who's um, has a clear cut vision and can command respect in that locker room in terms of, uh, and, and not be rattled when challenged in any way, shape or form. And speaking of Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, um, is it fair to say that if they don't sign off on this to some degree, uh, that this wouldn't have happened? Or could they have prevented this being that they are the stars of this team and they are here for the foreseeable future moving forward? Yeah, look, I don't I, – I think um, – and I, I, I'm, I, I feel like there is a certain – I think canvassing was the word that was used um, – I think anybody would hard, would find it uh, hard. I'm not talking about, I'm not speaking to truth or fiction or anything like that. Just the perception is that it's hard to believe that a decision like this would be made without some canvassing. And that was the word that was thrown out a little while uh, uh, during the press conference with Sean Marks and in conversations with the players too about, you know, canvassing and input and different things like that. Um, uh, I think many would find it hard to believe that you could come to the conclusion that Kenny has lost his voice in the locker room without canvassing mm -hmm. and getting a feel for people. So, um, look, I, I, um, Kyrie has a strong opinion. Kevin has a strong opinion. But every ownership group really across the board, whether we're talking NFL, NBA, whatever it may be, they have a strong opinion as well, and I think that their opinion would hold more weight than your than a uh, star than a star player per se. So um, I don't want to I, I don't want that to get lost in the shuffle too. That it's not a Kevin Kyrie versus Kenny type situation. Um, Sean mentioned this and that it was a it was a, a three party discussion. Joe Sy, the ownership group, Sean Marks and Kenny Atkinson. And I'm sure they would listen mm -hmm. if Kevin or Kyrie kicked in the door and said, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they would listen. But um, I, uh, to, to, for, to people to try to make it seem like, oh, Sean has just had no, no hand in this, or ownership had no hand in this, that, that Kevin and Kyrie are, are the puppet masters, I think, to me, that's, that's very naive. I think that there are a lot of strong personalities involved, and Sean is a strong personality with a strong opinion. Uh, um, Joe Sy, you know, I don't, I don't think people have heard a lot from him. Mm -hmm. You know, Iron Eagle had a conversation with him that aired, aired on Yes Network, but he has, a, you know, even though he's doing a lot of listening and doing a canvassing himself, he has a strong opinion, strong opinion too. And, um, uh, and so th there's just a number of factors that go into a decision like this to where uh, it's not simply on Kevin and Kyrie, um, you know, running, running the show or making decisions or anything like that. I think that's uh, I, I, there are a lot of people throwing that out there. I think that's a naive viewpoint because there are a lot of strong opinions in the room. That, 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 no, that's absolutely fair. One last thing before we get you out of here, Mike. Um, 
the team right now sits in the seventh spot. Um, I, I know I saw today from the press conference, uh, Sean Marks said playoffs is still the goal. Uh, do you think this is something that shakes this team? Do you think it brings them together closer uh, as they try to make this run for the playoffs? How, how do you think the team is, is affected by this? Or is it just kind of we got to wait and see through these last 20 games? You know, I, I um, tomorrow will be the test for me. Tomorrow is against Chicago, a team that's going to compete and fight. Not very good, but will compete and fight. And if they look flat at all against Chicago, maybe it's a temporary, they're still in shock kind of thing. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a sign of something else. I don't know. But I, I look at tomorrow and the way they compete and respond and looking at how focused they are going to be in that game against the, against the team, again, at home that you should be. Um, I'll look at that as a little bit of a, of a, of a litmus test. Um, I didn't, I'm just a sideline reporter, but I didn't like the disparity in the compete level of the Nets game, for example. Hmm. Um, the Nets have always been a try-hard kind of team, and their performance against the San Antonio Spurs was closer to what a lot of us have come to expect when you watch the Nets play. Whether they win or lose, you expect the compete level to be at a certain level, and we saw that again last night. If the compete level isn't where it should be tomorrow, could that linger into a long West Coast trip where you're facing the Lakers, where you're facing the Clippers? Uh, Golden State, even though they're not good at all, a little bit rejuvenated with Steph Curry being in the lineup. And when Steph's out there, you, you, don't, you don't know what's going to happen. So, mm-hmm. uh, and then Sacramento is no slouch um, at home. So this is something that, if they have a low compete level tomorrow, knowing their road ahead, that would be, I think, alarming from a, from, a, um, from a fan standpoint. But even with all that said, I think they'll make the playoffs. But even if they struggle, get swept in the first round or five games, there's still <laughs> incredible room for optimism. This is not the Knicks. This, sorry, guys. <laughs> they're, they're still incredible. You have Kevin and Kyrie coming back and a brand-new head coach to help lead the franchise. Right. So, um, so it, it's, not, it's not, you know, terrible at the end of the day if these guys play uneven basketball the rest of the stretch, get in there as an eight seed. I think even if they play poorly the rest of the way, the Wizards' schedule is brutal down the stretch, and I don't think the Wizards are going to catch the Nets. It would take a colossal collapse for these guys to not at least get the uh, get the eight seed. So I think it'll be interesting the rest of the way. But um, but uh, but uh, I think they will finish in the playoffs. And then despite the negative press of what's happened right now, there will be some healthy skepticism as to how good they can be next season. But there will be a lot of optimism in Brooklyn uh, with the direction the team is going. Yeah, no, I, de- I definitely think so. All right, man, we, we know you had a long day. It's not what you expected. Uh, please get some rest because you got a West Coast trip coming up. Uh, we will get you yes, in sir. here in the studio at some point towards the end of the season or before the playoffs for sure. We'll 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 link up again. But we thank you for the time, man. We appreciate it. and all the great work you're still doing on the Yes Network. Appreciate you as always, brother. All right, appreciate you guys. 